In today's Q&A video, I'll talk about used guillotines, type of wood used in medieval binding, boards for pressing the groove in the hinge, rounding single sheet books, and maybe a couple of other things. But first I want to mention Schmet, who are the sponsors of the Daz Answers Q&A series of videos. Schmet is a family business that's existed for more than 100 years. They're world leaders in the manufacture and sale of bookbinding tools, materials and machines. Schmet have generously offered a discount on the first order of new customers to Schmet and supporters of the DAS bookbinding channel. Just use the code DASQNA5, all capitals, at checkout. First question is about my guillotine and about it cutting through board and paper at the same time in the sewn board binding. Cutting board with a guillotine isn't the best thing to do because it's hard on blades, but sometimes you just have to do what you have to do, and the sewn board binding is a case where it's hard to avoid. I highly recommend looking out for used ideal brand guillotines. They're very popular with small printing businesses, and thus there's plenty of them on the used market. In the manual range, there are two broad types, the lever clamp and the screw down clamp. The lever clamp version puts less pressure on the paper and you need to keep the blade sharper, but it's much faster to use and cheaper. The screw down clamp will cut more material thanks to the higher clamping pressure, but it's slower to use and more expensive and less common. When shopping for a used guillotine, make sure it has all the safety guards and check the blade doesn't have any dings in it. For used prices, you can't expect the blade to be sharp. Sometimes people are selling because they're unhappy with the cutter performance and all they need to do is have the blade sharpened. So pass on any that are missing the safety guards, that the front back gauge adjust handle is broken, that have more than a bit of surface rust or have dings in the knife or blade. You should expect to pay on the high end for a clean model with a spare blade and the blade changing tool and maybe a spare cutter stick. My new to me guillotine is an ideal 4205 made in about 2008 which has the lever clamp. I paid $200 for it because it had a lot of rust on the back gauge guide bar. I spent almost a day pulling it apart and cleaning this up. But it has a spare blade and all the tools from the factory, especially the blade changing tool. I've offered my old 3600 to a friend. I've loved using my old model, but it doesn't have a spare blade and changing the blade is a real pain in the neck and not as safe as on the newer models. And I have Glennis to thank for finding this upgrade for me. In Australia, for the newer ideal models where you can change the cutter stick from the side, I think a fair price is two to four hundred for the lever clamp versions and three to five hundred for the screw down versions. This is about ten percent of the new price. The cutter stick is the red piece of plastic that the blade cuts down onto. It can be rotated four times and end to end twice. In total it can be used eight times. A new cutter stick will last most people years. Blades should be sharpened by a professional guillotine blade sharpening service, not the bloke that does kitchen knives and hairdresser's scissors. A guillotine will not give good results with a blunt blade. A blunt guillotine blade is still deadly sharp, so be careful. It just so happens that Schmet sell ideal guillotines and spare parts such as blades and really high quality cutter sticks. If you can afford one, a new ideal guillotine is an investment that will last a lifetime. There are other brands of small quality guillotines and I'm sure these are available used, but ideal are by far the most common in Australia. Guillotines and stack cutters are the same thing, but board cutters are different and the cutting action is a bypass cut, not an anvil cut. Board cutters usually have blades sharpened with a geometry for cutting board and thus why they don't go blunt as quickly. The next question is about what type of wood was used in early bindings. Well, modern boards are made of pulp board, generally known as binder's grey board or mill board. 
Early books with wooden boards generally used what wood was locally available and sometimes there's clear evidence that specific types of wood were favoured because of suitable qualities such as it doesn't split or warp. In Western Europe, oak and beech were common and it was probably split quartered, which reduced splitting and warping. But in North Africa, some types of acacia were used. All over the world, different woods would have been used. For medieval books, Zermai is the book to consult. For instance, in Zermai, he has a table of types of wood versus location for Gothic bindings. Of 400 bindings surveyed, 193 were oak, 151 were beech, 3 were pine wood or fruit trees, and 53 were unidentified. Patreon Jorge asks about the boards with the knitting needles on the edges. I don't remember if I demonstrated making these in a video, but they're very straightforward. Here's the diagram of them from Peter Verhaeyen's article, and there's a link in the description. I just take the ends off the knitting needles and tape them to the edge of the board, and then add a thin piece of card, which can be used to adjust how deep the rods push into the hinge, and it helps hold the knitting needles in place. In the past, it was common to have pressing boards with a strip of brass along the edge to press into the hinge. Schmet have a version of the brass edged board with an angled edged strip of metal, which they describe as a joint former. In bindings, such as the square back bradle, you want the covering material to go down the edge of the board and slope up to wrap around the spine piece. These boards press the covering material into the hinge to this shape perfectly. I'm also told they are excellent for vellum over boards bindings, where it's difficult to press the vellum down into the hinge. Gina asks, can you round the spine of a book that's made up of single loose leaves? Absolutely. If you want a rounded, single sheet book, it's best to put the round in during the spine gluing process. People will use a form to rest the book in to produce the round. Put the block of single sheets spine edge down into the form, which puts it into a rounded shape. Then clamp the block and glue the spine using the usual double fan method. And that's it. And the final question is about bookbinding supplies in Australia. In Australian politics, this might be called a Dorothy Dix. The state-based bookbinding guilds sell some materials to members, and it's worth joining just for this reason. They often have equipment for sale from past members, and it's probably the easiest way to get things like a nipping press. I have started selling again, but my online store is not yet up. I do have a price list, and there's a link in the description. There are a couple of small sellers that use eBay and Etsy, but I think they're expensive and don't have much range, and I can't really recommend them. The best supplier of bookbinding supplies is Carly Anderson of Anderson's Bindery in Redfern, Sydney. If there's something unusual you, that you're after and it isn't listed in my price list or Carly's website, contact me or Carly and we'll help you find it. There are a few specialist suppliers such as Archival Survival or Winter Bottoms that are more wholesale or supply trade and professionals, but they do take orders from anyone. And that's it for today. A big thank you to my Patreons and subscribers whose support makes this channel possible. And once again, a thank you to Schmidt for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to take advantage of the 5% discount. Until next time, cheerio. Bye.